So you say that the BMOC, mm -hmm. which the B stands for one time marker, M another, O another, and on. Yes, 30 okay. page, 30, 60, 90, 110 page. Okay. In a script, movie script. So to play the devil's advocate here, we sometimes see these comments, usually they come in late at night, which are, this is why Hollywood writes formulaic crap. Yes. How do we, how do we contend that? How do we say, well, then maybe Hollywood's not for you. What, what would be your answer okay. to someone? Take a show that I think, the new Robert Altman is a guy named uh, uh, Glover. He's a guy that wrote, is writing a show right now called Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now Atlanta is I think the hippest half hour show on television. It's a, he, he, a Glover's an African American dude. He's been an actor in several big shows. Um, and, but now he's got his own show. This guy gives us a world that we've never seen before, which is the world of middle, or kind of lower middle class African American Atlanta. Okay. Now Atlanta is a cool city and it's a big, there's a big African American culture that's part of Atlanta. I would submit to you, you probably don't know much about that world, right? I, I certainly don't. didn't, no. right? He shows you, and that's one of the great things, there's nine questions I ask you when, you when I'm working with you on a television show. One of them is, you showing me a world I ain't seen before? Because I don't want to see New York again on the Upper East Side with people there. Like, Please, <laughs> right? Show me a new world, right? So this is the world of middle and lower middle class Atlanta, and it's very African-American Atlanta. And it's very specific, and the story feels very loose. If you go look at the pilot of Atlanta, and it doesn't look like it's about much, sort of like a Robert Altman movie. It's got a very loose feel to it. It feels very improvisational. It feels like there's no rules at all, right, in this story. It's got every rule, every structure, every storyline, every rhythm of How I Met Your Mother or the most commercial sitcom -y structure that you'd ever want or ever not want. Or if you're a hipster, you'd say, I don't want to write that, right? It follows all the rules. So why is it so cool? Because it takes those rules and it shows you stuff you've never seen. The reason people say, ah, Hollywood's so formulaic is they're looking at bad, unimaginative stories with characters you've seen a thousand times, with situations you've been in a thousand times, with care, with, with in a world you've seen a thousand times. Set, but the structure, the commercial structure, is there because it's beautiful. The bones are beautiful. You can take different bones out, put other bones in, but there's an appeal below the surface of beauty. If you look at what we consider to be beauty, uh, if you took a, a, a skeleton, you'd see there was a conformity to the bone structure. Now you can put whatever you want on top of that bone structure. You can make uh, the person uh, 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 Tunisian, you can make them Indian, you can make them American Indian, you can make them whatever you want, but the bones below that determines whether or not they're beautiful. I think structure of story is like the bones beneath the, 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 the face. It's what we're instinctively drawn to as human beings, and that doesn't change, but what changes, what makes things unique are, is it a new world? Are these characters we haven't seen before? Is this guy have a wound that we haven't seen before? A Glover in Atlanta gives us a guy who is a real smart guy who went to Princeton, but he failed because he's got a core wound that he's a loser. And he's come back and he's just bumping around and hanging out in this middle class, lower middle class world of African American Atlanta. But he's a loser. He left Princeton probably because he felt like, I don't, these people aren't like me, which I felt when I went, I went to an Ivy League school and I felt the same thing. So, because I'm a loser, I'm going to drop out and I'm going to go back home. Now, back in Atlanta, he gets involved with his cousin who's a hip hop artist who he shouldn't get involved with. He also already has a baby, Glover does, his character does, and he's not being a really good father, but he's trying. He's not being a good husband at all. So, all the things, all the elements that we've seen from a dozen sitcoms from 1960 on are all present in Atlanta. But because we've never seen this world before, 
because we've never seen this. So he's kind of a slacker, an African American slacker. And it's also very funny. So every commercial cliche of structure is in this story. And yet it's the freshest thing on television. And so that's my argument against not using structure. Think of it this way. In, in, in California, we have these, these uh, uh, vanity license plates, right? And, and in a vanity license plate, I think you get seven letters, right? And in that seven letters, you've got to be witty, okay? <laughs> you can't go, oh man, you know what? It's such a cliche to have seven letters. My vanity plate's going to have 42. Because if you, take, if you make the vanity plate 42 characters long, it's not going to be funny when you say, you know, uh, uh, if you have a seven letter word uh, uh, that says, let's say you're driving a Corvette and your seven letters are two inches, right? <laughs> okay? That's okay. funny. Yes, seven. got me to laugh. If it was a 42 letter plate, you'd go, hey, I drive a vet because I have a small penis. Is that funny? <laughs> no. No, not Because as much. the form is too big. So commercial form is what we delight in. We want to, the limitations of commercial form produce the, the entertainment, right? The fact that it's a half an hour means you must cram certain things in it. And the delight of an audience in a commercial art form is how are they going to cram something we've never heard about and is witty into this limited commercial form? That's what commercial art does. That's why it's commercial art. You want to make a, 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 a sitcom that doesn't follow the rules? Great. Make one that's four hours long. Don't follow any of the rules. You can do it, but it's not commercial art. And your audience will probably be fairly limited. Unless you're such a super genius, you're going to create an entire new art form. That's what Susie's going to do. She's <laughs> Look, you can make an entire new art form. Please, God, let's see it from you. I'd love to see it. But you're going to have to be greater than Shakespeare, who, by the way, used a three-act structure. <laughs> Okay? Shakespeare worked inside a commercial structure, the structure of Stratford on Avon. He worked inside that structure. His plays were inside a commercial structure, and yet they're the greatest plays in history. So you can be original and be commercial too. That's my seductive message for, for the whorish Hollywood. <laughs> That there is a Hollywood pimp telling you, come on, baby, get in the seraglio, do it our way. <laughs> you can still be original. <laughs>